everyone. Um. All right, so for today's class, it is going to be on essential oils for maternal wellness and how to basically use essential oils as a mama for your little one during pregnancy, birth, postpartum, as well as for the whole family. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quick overview as to what essential oils are, how you can use them, and then Stephanie is going to go further into detail on exactly specifics for how to use them for maternal wellness. So my name is Zareen Barda. I am a mother of three. I'm the founder of Healing Oilistic, and I've been using doTERRA's essential oils for over six years now where I've started sharing them for about a year. My background is I'm a yoga instructor, as well as a continuing education provider, as well as aside from that, I'm an auto mechanical engineer. So one of my biggest passions is to basically serve others to empower them to make educated decisions about their healthcare. So let's get right to it. So for here, we have three cool things about essential oils. The first thing is that most essential oils are very safe. The essential oils that we recommend are 100% natural and safe where there's no side effects, there's nothing added in and there's nothing taken away. So they're 100% pure with no addictions and that way you're able to use them all the way across from infants up to grandparents. Where the second thing is essential oils are very effective. So what a lot of people don't know is that essential oils are actually able to metabolize in the body within about 30 minutes. So they don't work the same way as an isolated pharmaceutical drug might work. So for example, if you don't receive the relief that you're seeking from just one drop of doTERRA's essential oil, you can take another drop or put another topical application. So that's where you can use probably more than what um, maybe allowed typically for like a pharmaceutical drug where it doesn't have that toxic overload, it doesn't have those side effects, and that's where it is still beneficial for you because it is actually able to penetrate through the cell membrane because of the oily base of an essential oil. So that's where purity and potency are very important when you're looking at selecting an essential oil to use whether it be doTERRA or whether it be another brand, always ensure that you are looking to make sure that the purity is there, where, for example, if one drop of peppermint oil is equivalent to drinking 28 cups of peppermint tea. So that's a lot where you just need one drop and where a little goes a long way as well. So the second thing, as well as your sense is so powerful. Um, where you're able to smell an aroma. Anything that you're able to inhale or breathe in, it automatically has a purifying and calming effect, which then begins on the limbic system of the brain that deals with three key functions, your emotions, your memories, and your stimulation. So this system connects parts of the brain that deal with the high and the low functions for thinking and movement. Um, and that's where how vitally important essential oils can be, where they are so effective, where you want to ensure that what you're breathing in is pure and you're not breathing in harmful chemicals. Because when you are looking at alternative medicine, when you are looking at holistic alternatives, you want to ensure that you are making the right choices for those. So the last thing is that essential oils can also be very affordable. So when you take a look at it in terms of having to take time off work, having to pay your copay, having to go in and see the doctor and then pay for your prescription afterwards, when you look at how affordable it can be, when you look at break it down drop by drop, it actually is like pennies per dose, where one of the most common um, alternatives where I know for like little kids as well, as well as for adults, you'll see if a younger child is pulling on their ear, it's typically they're giving you an indication that they might be having an ear infection or something might be happening where they're not always able to vocalize it. 
This is where you're able to use essential oils where you could do two drops of lavender, two drops of tea tree on, and then dilute that according to the correct ratios and then just rub it behind their ears and they can have an automatic relief within a couple of minutes and that can automatically give them that soothing um, from relieving them from pain just because of the properties in the essential oils. And that's where lavender is such a gentle essential oil and it's also it also acts as an antihistamine. So it's very calming and very soothing. And this can be used for children as well as adults, just diluted according to the ratios. So Stephanie will go further into detail about the ratios that we'll be using and that will be safe for babies, moms, and throat pregnancy. So the three ways to use essential oils are aromatic, this is going to be one of the most common ways throughout pregnancy, as well as probably one of the most common ways that you are going to be exposed to essential oils is either by diffusing them or by being able to just put a drop in the palm of your hand, put rubbing your hands together and cupping your hands in front of your face and just taking a few deep breaths that automatically recenters you. It helps cleanse the air. It supports a respiratory system and can instantly affect and change your mood. So the second way is topically, where it automatically is able to affect the area that you are applying it to. So that's where you're able to have localized benefits. But I also know a lot of moms, one of the big things that we suggest is applying topically to the bottom of your feet. And people are like, well, if I apply it to the bottom of my feet, am I still getting the same benefits? And that's where having that essential oil being metabolized into your body so quickly and it being absorbed in within minutes, you're able to, I know moms that have said, I can automatically taste that in my mouth. Is that normal? Even though I haven't applied it near my mouth. And that's where it is actually able to be ingested so well or absorbed through your feet and it basically gets metabolized so quickly and you're able to reap the benefits throughout your whole body. So one thing that I'm just gonna to touch upon quickly is dilution. So throughout pregnancy for little ones, dilution is absolutely necessary. So this is just a quick dilution ratio where one drop of essential oil for about four teaspoons of carrier oil and then for children, one drop of essential oil into one teaspoon of carrier oil. And the carrier oil can be basically any lotion that you might have or fractionated coconut oil, jojoba oil, sweet almond oil, anything that's also gentle and safe for the little one as well as for the mama throughout pregnancy. So a great way is Stephanie will probably be going over some salves for some stretch mark salves, different um, ointments that you can create and some DIYs that you can also do throughout pregnancy. So again, feel free to ask questions if you have any specific topics that you're looking for. But coming back to the third way to use essential oils is internal use. So throughout pregnancy, if you, this is something that you're new to, internal use is not always recommended. What it's also up to is your comfort levels. So for example, myself, I've been using essential oils for so long where Throughout pregnancy, I know I experienced, especially with my twins, I had a lot of acidity, indigestion. That's where some of the doTERRA products like the Digest tab, instead of taking an antacid or an over-the-counter product, you can take like a Digest tab, which is really good and also has like a chewable that you can help to soothe your stomach and relieve your um, acidity and some of the indigestion that you might be facing. So that's kind of where if there are some of the supplements, those are more than welcome to be taken throughout pregnancy. And always, again, consult your medical care practitioner for anything that you are going to be using to change your protocols. So as Stephanie goes through her side of the presentation, what I want you all to do is write down your top three health concerns. So throughout the presentation, you might be thinking, okay, well, I can use essential oils for digestive concerns. I can use essential oils for nausea. How can you use it to assist a mom that might be feeling stressed, tired, painful? These are all things that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis, regardless of whether we're pregnant, as well as if you are going to be um, 
pregnant where a lot of these emotions and a lot of these feelings are going to be amplified. So what I want you to do is Stephanie will be sharing her contact details as well, but no matter who you have registered through, you can always drop me your top three. And then the person that will reach back out to you will be whoever you've enrolled or whoever has invited you to this class. And they'll work with you to kind of go through your top three areas of concern and guide you the best ways for using the essential oils. So I want you guys to stay tuned. We will be offering anyone that is interested in using the essential oils or learning more about them a bonus. So I will come back to that afterwards. Stephanie, if you want to take it away with your presentation, I will stop my screen sharing and we'll continue. Okay, <clears throat> super. Thank you, Zareen. I appreciate that laying the foundation for my talk because I will be talking about how to integrate essential oils into a pregnancy, postpartum, and also use with infant care and young children. And of course, a lot of these recommendations, as Zareen was saying, you know, if I talk about nausea or back pain or something that everyone has, not just when you're pregnant, you can certainly use the same oils in the same ways I'm talking about. Um, I am going to be providing a handout with a nice chart that goes from, you know, pregnancy through each stage. Um, this is a dilution chart. And then into children, like separated by how old they are, you know, so infants is one category. And then as you grow up, you have a stronger concentration. So you will be able to adapt these uses to whatever stage of life you're in. Um, but first I wanted to introduce myself. Um, I'm gonna switch my view here for a minute. So I'm not, I'm focused. Okay. <laughs> Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to share my screen in a minute, but I like to do my first introduction where you can see me. <laughs> um, my name is Stephanie McBride. I'm born and bred in Portland, Oregon in the US, and I have three kids. And I have been into natural health for a long time. I'm a functional nutritionist, a certified clinical aromatherapist and clinical herbalist. And I would say a lot of my life has been spent just loving nature, backpacking. Um, I was an environmental studies major and getting into natural health. I think it's definitely wonderful in integrative care. So it could be used um, with medical care alongside those things, or just like as a first um, defense at home, or if you're a practitioner or a teacher, it's a wonderful thing to integrate into your practice or into your classes. But I got interested in this because I had, um, I guess I had hip pain, chronic hip pain for a long time um, after having babies. And I literally just like stopped jogging. I, I would like hobble along when I went on hikes with friends and my family. It was chronic in one hip. And around that time, a friend of mine kept inviting me to these doTERRA essential oil classes. And I literally, it was like bedtime for my kids. She lived across town. I was just like, I felt so guilty after she'd invited me like four or five times that I finally said, gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm actually interested in, in herbs and stuff. So I would like to know. And she's just like, let's just go to the cafe and talk. And um, she gave me an oil to take home for my hip pain. And I honestly, I was just like, what? I, she gave me like a bottle that size with like three drops in it. And um, I put it on my hip that night and went to sleep and I woke up and I had no more hip pain, like whatsoever. So I was amazed and it never came back either. I was really excited about this because I was used to working with a lot of herbal, um, like mostly teas and tinctures and things like that. And they work amazingly. And sometimes they're instantaneous, but a lot of times it takes a long time. Um, and I was excited to have something so fast because working with pregnancy, which was my main demographic as a nutritionist and consultant, I know that you have all these aches and pains. And also with kids, things are like in the moment, there's all these like discomforts that come up and they're really not usually like chronic old conditions, but they, they happen to you all the time and they disrupt your like enjoyment of life. <laughs> and I found that with essential oils, you can just have them in your purse or your diaper bag and just take them out and literally like work on your back pain, work on your headache, work on your fatigue, on your digestion, on your indigestion. Um, there's so many things you can do to prepare for birth. So I'm going to stop talking about all that and just start sharing my slide and get into more of the details for this. So give me a minute to get this set up. And now Zarine, I hope you can see people when they're asked to be, people are coming in a little bit later and I had to add them. I hope you can do that as host because I don't think I can see that anymore. 
Okay, so oh, that's my contact information, but I'll come back to that at the end. So this is a picture of me with my daughter who's now 18. And I say our greatest challenges give birth to our greatest strengths. And in part, I do that because when this picture was taken, I was an absolute wreck. I hadn't slept in three nights. Um, she was three days old. Like I, I basically, maybe more than three nights, I was up, I had a 31 hour labor and two missed nights of sleep. And then after she was born, I slept for two or three hours and then didn't sleep for three days. Um, and that whole experience just completely threw off my, my um, endocrine system and my health for many, many years. And it was essential oils that got me my health back 10 years after the fact. So I have this um, story about this that's very personal to me that I won't tell all of tonight, but I'm going to be bringing it up a little bit through the presentation to show you how the oils would have helped me when I was in labor having a natural birth. Um, and how they then helped me later um, when I was trying to recover from kind of the, the strain and the fatigue and the damage caused, which I guess I would say it was um, adrenal fatigue or chronic fatigue after the birth. But if you want to have a natural birth and you don't want any medication, which I was really adamant about and I was grateful that I could do, um, it's wonderful to be able to bring in something, something, not just have nothing. <laughs> and this is what I didn't know then. So now I really wanted to dedicate a lot of my time and my passion and my knowledge on this topic and to share with other women how they can bring this into birth. So if they want natural birth or even in a um, birth at a hospital with some medical assistance, it's like you can bring essential oils in and it will help so much to um, mitigate some of the things you may experience. Um, so first of all, just a quick disclaimer, um, this information is for educational purposes. Please, if it's a medical condition or concern, talk to your practitioner. Um, guidelines for maternity. I know some people here uh, saw some familiar faces and welcome you all. And I know some people here are probably educators or um, birth professionals and others maybe are women having babies or um, you know, have already had babies. But anyway, if you're giving recommendations to other people, certainly um, work within your scope of practice um, use these in normal, healthy pregnancies with women who've given their consent. As Zareen was saying, we love doTERRA because there's such high therapeutic quality. Um, lavender is the most adulterated essential on the market. So if you go to the supermarket and pick up lavender, it's probably just going to have been produced for the scent alone. And they're not going to take such amazing, delicate care, educated care on keeping those constituents that are um, actually therapeutic in the oil. So you wanna find an oil, if you're gonna use for the purposes I'm talking about, that is made for therapy. Start with the lowest concentration. And again, like I'm going to be emailing you guys a chart with all those concentrations. And I also have a couple slides on that here, but you can start with the lowest, but you can build up. So when, I, when you see what's recommended, like especially for adults, if I'm saying one drop per teaspoon for massage and you just don't smell the oils and you don't feel the difference, you can certainly increase that concentration level. Avoid prolonged use of any one oil. This is a big part because they lose their efficacy if you use one oil over and over again. They really work better if you change it up and kind of trick your brain a little bit. Um, also, some oils have mild uh, mild or stronger um, hormonal effects and other things about them that you'd benefit from taking breaks from. So I usually use them for one week on and then maybe switch to another one and then come back. Test diluted oils on the wrist before use. Um, I'll go into that more. Avoid eye and ear contact. Um, I know a woman who put oregano in someone's ear, like straight in her ear, and it was just this awful painful night I heard. So please, um, avoid eye and ear contact. And even with the skin, be really careful with those strong oils like oregano. You can always dilute with a carrier oil. So if you get it in the eye or the ear, it's a carrier oil will help you um, to dilute that instead of water. The number one cause of harm of essential oils is that they're in reach of children who get into them. Usually they get them in their eyes or their ears or something like that. So um, I don't know if there's any nursing moms and now I can't see you guys, unfortunately, um, because of the way the slides are. But if you are a nursing mom or work with nursing moms, these are some great recommendations. They are safe for nursing, um, but please apply them after the baby's nurse. This is in large part just so the baby doesn't taste them and get turned off from the milk or so there's not like direct contact with the eyes, nose, you know, or face um, during nursing. So after the baby's nurse, there's plenty of time for the oil to be absorbed. If it's still, if the skin is still oily, it's most likely just the carrier oil, but you can always take like a warm cloth and wash it off um, 
And then you want to apply diluted in the direction of the nipple. Um, also seek professional advice for medical conditions. These can be amazing for infections of the breast, but they'd be something to like keep in check with your doctor and get advice in addition to trying the oils for. Essential oils may taste, or sorry, change the taste of breast milk. So if you're using oils and you're like, why is my baby not drinking milk suddenly? Like keep that in mind, that could be a factor. Um, and then don't take internally less prescribed or until the baby is three months or older. This is really largely because um, about 1% goes through the mom's breast milk to the baby. And we really don't know, we haven't studied the effects of the immature liver. Babies are not born with a mature level or mature liver. Um, so this is really just out of precaution. I haven't heard anything that's been reported um, in any of the Merck indexes or anything about it causing harm. But I just suggest until the baby's like established with milk, um, unless you really need to take them internally, I would wait until the baby's a little bit older just to not interfere. Also things like peppermint and spearmint can reduce breast production. That being said, you know, I love to take On Guard, which is our immune defense blend. It's amazing. It's so antimicrobial and like crosses through the blood brain barrier and um, into the cells and gets in deep into your body where you need to fight infection. Um, however, like it can be pretty strong, but if you're choosing between antibiotics and something like on guard internally while nursing, I would probably go with the on guard just because you have to look at the risk versus benefit. So I don't know if that makes sense to people, but that's kind of how I look at it. Just use precaution. I wouldn't just haphazardly be eating a bunch of oils with a new baby. Guidelines for infants, avoid contact again with the mouth, nose, eyes, and ears. Dilute to one drop per 15 milliliter, which is tablespoon. And these are like the gentle oils, which I'll talk about soon. This is kind of the boring part of the talk, but I just wanted to go over sort of the, the basics um, of how to, how to use these in precautions first. Test oils on the skin for your, and check for irritation for two to 12 hours before use. So in this sense, like I might make up a blend for a baby's diaper rash, for example, and keep it on the changing table. But before I start using it, you might want to like put it on um, the top of the foot or the wrist and just make sure you're not going to get a big reaction. Um, I love lavender and melaleuca or tea tree for a diaper blend. And if there's fungus, especially, or any kind of like stinky yeasty condition, put the melaleuca in. Um, consult a physician for medical issues. Use an emulsifier such as liquid soap in baths. Uh, they're great in baby's baths, but you don't want to put the drops on top of the water where they're not actually mixing in because you know that could easily get in the eye or someplace else and cause some harm. So you just wanna make sure even for yourselves, gosh guys, like when I started using essential oils, I didn't think they worked at all because I just didn't notice any benefit. I hardly smelled anything. And I read about Cleopatra putting like a half a cup of heavy cream, like you'd put in your coffee or half and half or something with about five or six drops of lavender in the bath. And it said to fill the tub first and then to add this combination to the bath and swirl it together. And I still do these like every winter, especially like these baths are amazing. It's so much different than if you shake it in the top of the tub without mixing it with an emulsifier. So not just for baby's safety, but for you, like for the full benefit, make sure to like use something um, like salts, liquid soap, glycerin. I love heavy cream. Some people are allergic to cream, um, but those are really nice in the bath. Um, some of the gentle oils for infants include lavender, Roman chamomile, melaleuca or tea tree, orange, I also like helichrysum. You don't need to have a lot of oils. If you only pick two for a baby, I would probably just pick like lavender and melaleuca. And with that, you can deal with teething pain and with, you know, belly button healing and that all kinds of stuff. And also colds, like the orange is digestive, so much stuff you can do for babies with just those four or five oils. So use caution with eucalyptus and mints with babies and young children. Um, don't apply to the chest. If you don't know why, like apply these to your chest and just feel how like cold and like they kind of make you freeze up. But the, these oils apply directly to the chest have led to some respiratory problems in kiddos that are under two. Um, also some, moms that I don't really understand this at all, but I kind of do. Like if you don't know anything about natural medicine and you're used to doing like nasal sprays, um, some moms have put eucalyptus and peppermint like directly up a baby's nose. And that is like leads to the hospital. Like no babies have actually 
um, died from this, but it's really serious. So <laughs> pass that on. I'm not saying, I'm saying this because I think you're at this class, you know better than that. But like, if you're teaching other people and sharing oils with other people with babies, make sure they understand like how to use them, please. Um, so, and then for oil use, that can start for children who are over 39 pounds or 18 kilograms. I don't know why my answer isn't working. Okay, oops. <clears throat> so um, Zareen touched on aromatic applications, and I guess I would sum these up for any time of life, not just pregnancy, as being for affecting the mood and emotions because you're going straight to the limbic system or the kind of primal like seat of emotions. Um, they're also good for sinus discomfort or clogged sinuses. Um, for that, I usually put them in a mug of hot water. I like like maluka and lemon. Um, if you're not pregnant, oregano is great. Marjoram is a good substitute for oregano if you are pregnant. And lavender also in that, you can just inhale it. It's really great for um, helping. Most sinus infections are fungal. So those oils will take care of that. Also for air purification, it's really nice, um, especially the monoterpenes, which are usually the citrus oils are nice to just clean the space. So I like when people are going into labor to clean labor room first, but like orange and frankincense is really nice or any of the citrus ones, bergamot has like this really lovely floral plus citrus mixed to it that's calming and uplifting and purifying at the same time. So these are nice, not just in the labor room, but you know, after the baby's born and just to keep your house clean. Um, also with the aromatic applications, they're great for memory. Um, I have, if you're interested in frankincense, I have a webinar on YouTube under my name, Stephanie McBride on, I think it's called top 10 uses for frankincense, but I tell the story of my mom who had Alzheimer's and how I used frankincense for her memory. Um, pretty amazing. So infant precautions. So this is where like, I'm trying to kind of hone in and specialize on this, this time in life for you guys, because it is a little bit different than just, oh, all the oils are safe all the time, which is usually the case. But um, with infants, you want to avoid using them in like a steamy shower. So you don't want to lock your baby or your cat, I told someone today, in a steamy shower room and have the oils diffused. It's, it can be too much and compromise their respiration. Also, if anyone's struggling with respiratory issues that are serious, like I wouldn't expose them to essential oils unless you really are like working with a practitioner and understand that. Um, and also just constant exposure. And that's a lot because babies need to smell their parents and their environment. So we don't want to always expose them like every day, every second of every day. Every day is great, but not like constantly. Hi, honey. Hi. Well, I just stepped out of the shower. You went away. Are you still talking? Well, I can't hear whoever was talking. Maybe try again, or you could try to type the question. And actually, Zareen said I could see it, but my slideshow takes up the whole screen. I can't see anything. So I'm just going to wait till the end and then try to go through those. Um, anyway, uh, so some aromatic uses you might need during the childbearing year include for nausea, fatigue, poor sleep, labor pain. Um, for labor pain, I recommend for aromatic use, um, I mean, yes, have a diffuser to cleanse the room and stuff, but especially if you're in a hospital setting or a birth center someplace public, having the mom or yourself like bring like a special handkerchief with you and, and using it, something you can hold up to your face and inhale from as needed, like especially between contractions can be really nice because it gives the woman control of when she's using the oils. Um, Clary Sage is a really amazing oil. I'll talk about that later to use for that purpose. Also like jasmine, rose, lavender. Um, there's a lot of great ones, but that's nice to have on hand. Also for anxiousness, these are really nice. That comes up a lot for some people, especially during transition phase of pregnancy um, where peppermint is indicated. Hormonal imbalance um, and postpartum benefits from diffusion of essential oils or use on a necklace or something like that. For infant teething and upset, it can also help and also for lots of different kinds of digestive problems. Now that's just the short list. There's so much more you can do with these, but just some suggestions. Um, so for topical applications, so again, test on skin. Um, during pregnancy, women are more photosensitive because they have higher levels of a hormone called the melanocytic hormone. 
And so like if you're using oils a lot on your skin, let's say you're using like lemon or um, another citrus oil on your skin and going out in the sun and not noticing getting a sunburn, um, you might when you're pregnant. So like you just want to be extra careful. Bergamot is the most photosensitizing oil that we have. And um, it's actually like a lot more severe when you're pregnant because of your hormonal changes. So just be aware that if you do use those oils topically and you're not covering up with clothes and you're going out somewhere sunny, then you could get really sunburned. So wait, you know, like 12 to 24 hours after application, especially the stronger ones. Um, when we talk about diluting for pregnancy, we're not worried about toxicity or having like you know, an abort, abortive faucet, we call it like an abortive effect on pregnancy. We're really thinking about just the fact that women have more sensitive skin. Like, you know, your liver is working overdrive and you're pregnant and your hormones are different and your bodily functions have changed. So it makes your skin more sensitive. So that's why we recommend diluting for applications when you're pregnant. Now, um, for example, like, oh, you guys can't see me, I guess, but I have this bottle of oil here and it's about half of a, a blend, a grounding blend by doTERRA called Balance and half like coconut oil. And like, this would be a great combination for pregnancy. And I don't think it would give anyone any um, skin sensitivity issues. So if you have oils you like, and they're just straight, you can always mix them, put about a third into a roller bottle of the essential oil and then two thirds of the carrier oil. Or if it's really like a, a mild oil, like lavender or something gentle, you could put half lavender and half um, carrier oil. And if you have no problem at all, and you're like, I love using my oils neat on the back of my neck and I have no sensitivity, like go for it. Like this is just like the first step. Like you're always building on the first place to start, which is the most diluted. And then if that's no problem and you feel like you need more, or you want a stronger effect, go for it. It's really just about you having your skin react. Um, I'd already mentioned using emulsifiers and baths, so here's a blend. Um, it's a postnatal peri blend, um, but it can be used for a lot of different things. It's really just like a skin balm. Um, so you can also use this in preparing for labor. You can um, look at the dilutions I have there. Uh, and let's see, I guess I was gonna, I had, I thought a lot of you might be into the milliliter thing instead of the teaspoons. So I converted my <laughs> slides to that, but I think basically five milliliters is one teaspoon. So if that gives you an idea of how much this is, but so this could be made to a wound spray. Um, the only thing I'd recommend is that you kind of have to make these fresh a lot. So um, if you're not working at a birth center or something, you might want to like make smaller batches of this, or you can do a sits bath um, after the baby's born. It's really nice for healing those tissues like frankincense. Guys, watch my webinar. Like it's such an amazing, incredible oil. Like it's good for everything. And it's definitely one I would put in your birth bag or recommend to people. Heli Chrysum, more expensive, um, but similar uh, properties, really anti-inflammatory like lavender and frankincense. Um, frankincense helps to your cells to rejuvenate really quickly. I've seen these really cool photos of like a motorcycle accident before and after frankincense. And it's incredible like how quickly the skin will heal with these oils. But so this can also be used in like a perennial massage before the baby's born. Like some midwives and other practitioners recommend stretching out, you know, yourself before you give birth. And these oils can help and be used during that and also be used during um, second stage of labor when you're pushing the baby out. It can help prevent tearing. Okay, so here are just some basic dilutions. Um, I'm not gonna linger here since I'm giving you guys the handout. Make sure that you sign up for the class like through the Eventbrite link so that we have your email and can find you. But you should get this or you can email us if you don't know how to do that. Um, but basically like this is for massage dilution. So just because it says one to two drops in a teaspoon of carrier oil, that doesn't mean you can only use one teaspoon over the whole body. It just gives you an idea of the concentration. So keep that in mind. Um, so if you're gonna do massages every night, you wanna like triple these or quadruple these and have it you know, next to your bed all mixed up. Um, if you use different kinds of oil, just make sure that the total amount of oil matches this chart here. So, so here are some other dilutions that I mentioned a little bit like with the um, roller bottle and then bath. I go into a little bit more detail about this in the handout.
Okay, so topical uses include for pain. Oh my gosh, so good for pain. Um, in part, like I did a presentation for our college on pain and it was so interesting. This was years ago, but it was so interesting to read the studies and learn how much uh, tension has to contribute to the perception of pain. So that's why you see like lavender often for pain because it can help you to relax your muscles and it helps you to de-stress and be calm. And it triggers the um, side of your nervous system that's relaxing, the parasympathetic side. There are other oils, however, that work on pain through different pathways, like ginger, for example, they think works on like neuro, or not neurotransmitters, but it works on pathways in the brain. Maybe it is neurotransmitters. Sorry, I don't remember exactly, but it does work through the brain um, instead of through the calming effect. Also things like black pepper work like that. So usually when I talk about pain of any kind, I wanna mix like some kind of relaxing floral oil. Um, it could be even like geraniums derived from the leaves of the geranium plant, but I still think of it as a floral oil because it's so like, like a flower in smell and everything. Um, Roman chamomile is really nice, ylang ylang. Uh, so in helichrysum, so all of these are really calming and relaxing. And if you mix them with things that are penetrating and, and um, are able to go deep, they, they're called driving oils, they go deep in the body like peppermint. Um, now wintergreen's amazing, but I don't recommend it during pregnancy. Also, I don't recommend birch as much during pregnancy because they can thin your blood, okay? So you have your blood's almost doubled in volume during pregnancy. So that's not the effect that we want. So it's not that it's like hugely dangerous or it could cause major issues. It's just not the right oil to use. So I definitely encourage people to use things like black pepper instead. And um, the furs are nice, Siberian fur, white fur, things like that are really good and considered driving oils. Even cypress is kind of like a driving oil. So I think you get the hint or like eucalyptus, you know, the stuff that like you, it penetrates deeply into you. So if you put the floral oil in a blend with those driving oils or, sorry, let's do my chair, or you um, put, you layer them, you put the floral oil on first and then on top you put the peppermint or some kind of driving oil, then it really helps to push in um, where you need to go. Okay, on from pain, discomfort and tension, stomach discomforts. Um, also, a lot of these are good for that. Black, pe black pepper is great for that. Um, poor circulation or varicosities, also black pepper. It's, it's, to me, that's another great one to have for pregnancy and labor and delivery and everything. Um, and then damage to the skin and tissue, which is like the last one I mentioned. So one other thing about pain, like during labor, it's really nice to have a hot compress. And actually for one of mine, I had cold compress, although I know it's a bit controversial in the birth professional world. So you can, that's kind of your call, but you can use a crock pot or some kind of plug-in electric pot and just make your like bath with your like emulsifier. Like in this case, I'd probably use glycerin and hot water and essential oils and just have some rags and cloths in there that you can keep warm. And as the, I mean, you have a lid for it, but like as the oils, um, like steam off, like you're going to want to um, put more oils in as you go, even if you're not out of water. But this is such a great way to use them in, during labor on your back or your front, like wherever you need them, where your pain is. Okay, so I wanted to talk for a minute about internal applications. I know a lot of people that are already using doTERRA and other brands that are safe for internal use um, are really into internal applications and they get pregnant and they wonder if it's safe. Um, I'm actually more of the school of thought to um, stick more with the citrus oils if you're going to use them internally. Uh, and this is to me because we have traditional, we have this huge long history of people using essential oils um, from the rind of fruit like lemons and oranges. And I think it's very safe and like stood the test of time. But in general, I would say um, if nothing else, and this is what some of the like most informed educators on this topic agree with is that if you have a miscarriage and they ask what have you been doing and you've been taking peppermint internally as beadlets all day like they're gonna say oh my gosh like that's an aminagog which means it brings on menses that caused your uh, miscarriage so I think that there's a risk of essential oils getting a bad rap that's one thing and I also just think we don't have we don't have research on it. So, I mean, we don't know, like essential oils are so antimicrobial. Like I don't necessarily want 
Um, I don't, they don't kill off things like an antibiotic drug would do, but I still think it's a delicate time um, in pregnancy and with nursing at the beginning and stuff when you're, you're giving the, your gut flora to your baby. And so I would just suggest that unless it's like something really acute that you're like, oh my gosh, it's either antibiotics and these drugs or essential oils. Like at that, at that point, work with a practitioner, figure out which ones will work for you. Um, and then maybe that's the best choice, but for things like digestion, I think they work amazingly just using them topically and, um, smelling them instead of like messing around there. So I know people always have questions about that. Um, so here's a list of my top favorite oils for pregnancy. So um, take a screenshot if you like. Also my website, which is dailynectaressentials.com. I have like a page on there where it goes by time and pregnancy. So there's like labor and delivery and everything. And you can look and see which oils I like for which part of pregnancy the best. So here's a couple other things to be aware of. Um, now these are not like dangerous contraindications they're more just herbal actions. So like I said, with regard to wintergreen and birch, like how, well, when your blood volumes double, like, do you really want to thin your blood? Like you're told not to have aspirin during pregnancy because it thins your blood. So to me, like wintergreen and birch are just not the right fit. And the kind of herbalism that I've been studying for over 25 years is where you match the uh, constitution to uh, the person. So kind of like Chinese medicine, like energetics or Ayurvedic, where we're looking at energetics. So what I have on this list is some somewhat about energetics and somewhat about what's actually contraindicated and what has been associated with harm in the past. So um, the cardiac stimulants include cinnamon and cassia, and they've just there's just some wonky studies on these ones, guys. Like I read every research study I think I could find on pregnancy and essential oils, and um, cinnamon was associated with altered length of pregnancy and lactation problems. So I'd say like, that's one to save. Um, and then Cassia kind of similar issues. They're also very, very warming, which can be nice, but pregnancy is kind of a hot condition and most people feel hot during it. So um, there are the blood thinners I already mentioned. And then some of them have a hormonal influence. It's not to say like, don't ever use these. They actually have a really good time that you can use them during pregnancy. And I'll talk more about Clary Sage, but um, I wouldn't suggest ingesting fennel um, during pregnancy. That's one of the ones that um, we can reduce the intensity of oxytocin and also affects your hormones in other ways. So I would like, I think some of the um, supplements have fennel in them. So that concerns me a bit. I would use that topically, however, and then also to promote breast milk production and stuff. I think topically is great, even internally at that point can be okay. Um, let's see, uterine contractors, clary sage, jasmine, myrrh and rose, these are really amazing for labor and they can actually, when you're ready to go into labor, they can actually help to bring on labor. Um, I know that from talking and interviewing with midwives who work with so many women, like hundreds and hundreds of women trying it, but there are no research studies on this, unfortunately. Um, but things like geranium as well and lavender blended with clary sage or jasmine, myrrh, rose can help if you're ready to go into labor and you haven't been progressing. Just make sure you've checked in with the doc because you don't want to have like a breech baby that you're <laughs> trying to speed along. Um, okay, so oils with reason for precaution, basil, rosemary, oregano, thyme, fennel, and dill. And this is during pregnancy. Okay, so here, so what are you going to do if you already love doTERRA and you know that you love On Guard and that's your blend, or you know you love Deep Blue or Deep Ice or whatever people call it where, where you live? <laughs> um, these are my recommendations for substitutions for these. It can be really fun to play around with this and make your own, but in general, this is kind of what I like and it works amazing. It's, it's not really a loss as far as I'm concerned. Hope you guys know how to take screenshots if I'm going too fast. Um, okay, so essential oils for babies. Um, I've mentioned and have starred down there the ones I already talked about. I'd also mentioned orange and helichrysum. I just wanna go through really quickly and tell you how I would use these. Um, the cardamom that doTERRA has, they, it's really cool how they sourced it because if I have this correct, the um, I know that it was from, the cardamom from India is mo mainly used for digestive purposes. And then there's another cardamom, I can't remember where it's from, that was for respiratory purposes mainly because of the constituents that are dominant in the plants because of where they're grown. 
And doTERRA found a cardamom with levels of those two things both high. And that, I think that that was in Guatemala, am I right? Um, and so this cardamom actually is really high in the respiratory benefits as well as the digestive benefits. So this one's awesome for both those things. And it makes your kids smell like a cupcake or something. It's great in banana bread. Um, it's awesome. And that's what I do like going into as your kids grow up and how to use these, like they're so fun for cooking. Dill is really nice for stomach upset. And also if you like raita <laughs> and Indian food with cucumber and yogurt, really good in that. Um, frankincense is good for everything you can think of. Watch my webinar. Uh, helichrysum is like um, essential oil arnica. So I think of it for bumps and bruises and um, inflammation and blood, you know, stagnation, like maybe varicose veins. If you have varicose veins after um, delivery or during, you can use that. Um, and then these other ones, lavender is just like a catch all for everything. Like you wouldn't think of it as being so good for colds and stuff, but it's really good for the immune system. So is melaleuca with a, especially um, good for fungal infections. Orange is just digestive and good like to diffuse during cold and flu season. Um, Roman chamomile is relaxing and also an immune stimulant, good for sleep. And then rose can be, it's so antibacterial. Like you can't believe how strong of an action that has, but I think it also, um, I like it, the emotional effects of, it's just like, to me, like just love. And like, so if, if kids feel sad or if you feel sad, like rub it into your heart. Like I would love to have more time to tell you what that's done to change my life, but it's amazing. Okay, so I wanna go through these. I don't know how to find out if people are having questions. Maybe I'll just keep going and- No questions as of yet. Okay, okay, cool. So I'll just keep going through these. And then if you have anything at the end, like jot it down. So one of my favorites, so now I'm going through some of my very favorite oils, which I would recommend just recommending to others if you're a teacher or provider or having in your own birth kit. Uh, black pepper, um, is something I've talked about a little bit already, but here's a list of some of my favorite uses. Pain, uh, poor digestion, I'm sorry, digestive problems and poor circulation. So that's gas, diarrhea, constipation. Um, and just to stop there for a second, if you have poor circulation, for example, I would probably add a drop of this to a lotion and maybe put something like grapefruit or um, bergamot in it as well and just rub it up your legs. Like if that's where the circulate, poor circulation is, or if it's all over your body, like some people put it in the shower when they're showering and just like have it, you know, kind of something that they can inhale or just put it all over the body in a lotion, something like that. For digestive problems, if you have constipation, it's great to put it in a um, carrier oil and then rub it in um, a clockwise direction over your abdomen. And then for diarrhea, you do counterclockwise. So you're going in the direction of your bowels and it actually really can help um, to contribute to the action of the oil. And I, I usually don't use black pepper alone. It's really blends well with other oils like geranium's a nice one. You could um, put one of the citrus oils in it for the digestive problems. You can use it in salad dressing. Um, it's also good for cramps and uterine spasms. So think of that with, I mean, these ones that are good for cramps, like they can be all kinds of cramps. I had. I've had a couple times. I, my mom always said, don't eat in bed. <laughs> and I've done this before. I've, I've had like a banana or something just in bed while I'm lying down. And have you ever had that where you have like an esophageal spasm? It's so painful. It's awful. And both ginger and black pepper, I have like, I don't know how I thought of it in the moment when it was happening, but I just grabbed and put on and literally in like a second, it was gone. I mean, it's, it's really amazing. So you can have a lot of cramping after the baby's born um, in postpartum and also in the third phase of labor. So that's a great one to have on hand. Um, it helps with brain fog and um, it helps with fatigue. So this could be good after, you know, at the end of labor or long labor um, and also with baby brain. It helps with cigarette addic addiction um, and then also depressed mood. And like it's actual emotional thing is for courage. So another reason to have it in for labor pain, I think, is, and for labor energy. So just the precautions it makes us, sorry? We have one question that's come in. Um, sure. So they're asking, so because the Digest Zen or the Zen Just has fennel in it, would you recommend substituting black pepper? 
Yeah, I mean, that would be amazing, but you can also, you can use it topically. I just wouldn't, I mean, and it's also a small amount of fennel. It's so, it's so hard for me to teach this because if the person listening takes it like all the time, you know, it could have an, a hormonal effect. Like, I don't know how much people are, are self-dosing. Um, if you're just using it occasionally, I think topically during pregnancy, it's great. Um, even with the fennel, because I'm not too worried about fennel topically. But black pepper, I mean, try black pepper anyway. It's really nice. I mean, it's a great thing to, to use and you can make your own blends with black pepper and a couple other oils. Yeah, but it, keep in mind, it can cause skin sensitivity, especially if it's oxidized. Some of these oils will oxidize if you um, leave them in a hot car or something. So they won't be as, the, it changes the chemistry. Um, and also not recommended in baths. I mean, just cause it can cause sensitivity in some people. So Clary Sage, Salvia Scalera, is one of my favorite oils. It's the most sedative oil that we have. And I use it for sleep all the time right now. Um, it's also great for brain fog and clarity. Um, think of the name Clary Sage, and you may know the tradition of burning sage also for like purification and clarity. Um, it really does like clear out things. So. Um, it can help with late term, like I said, if to get labor started, if your body's ready, um, so it could clear out the baby. <laughs> it helps to regulate con contractions and make them more effective. I'm gonna talk about that after I get done with the list. Um, pain during labor is really good, after pains. It can help to bring on the first lactation. So I wouldn't continue using clary sage for any time like there's low milk supply, but to bring on that first lactation, if there's trouble, it could really help that one. It's good for night sweats and imbalanced hormones. It's nice during perimenopause. It's also good for postpartum blues. And it's one, I like postpartum blues blends. I have in my guidebook, Essentials for Pregnancy and on my tear pad, I have some blends for um, just hormonal balance during that time. I definitely like use Clary in that with Ylang Ylang and a few other oils. So back to the contractions, I just like to clarify. So this is like oxytocin in a bottle to some degree, that's a drug. So it's more isolated while well, this is a whole plant and has a lot of other attributes such as the calming. Like it's amazing to have something that makes your contractions more effective and stronger, but it's also calming at the same time. So I really love that balance about the plant. However, once your contractions get going and are regular, switch it out for something else. Don't keep using it because it can create like hypertonic effect. It can make it too fast. So just remember that this is very potent um, a lot of people say, oh, these oils are so pure, you know, you can use as much as you want. But to me, it's like, they're so pure, they're so potent. You don't have to, like you, you need to treat them with respect. They can be used as medicine. If that's in your scope of practice. Um, I work with a lot of doctors and a brain surgeon and people that use them as medicine. So just keep in mind, if you're self treating, um, or teaching others and you're, you're not a doctor, like, just keep in mind that this can have a very strong medical effect on contractions and let moms know to stop using it once the contractions are regular and, and strong. So that's another reason to have it on a hanky because then you can just say, oh, okay, well, wow, contractions are going great. That worked really well. So let's switch out for like jasmine and, and rose or something like jasmine's amazing for labor because it does keep the contractions regular, but it doesn't have as strong of a contracting effect as clary sage. And also it's very, very calming. Um, and make sure you're using salvia sclera, not salvia officinalis, um, which isn't what we'd use during this. Avoid until the mother is to term. So that means avoid this throughout pregnancy. Um, and then make sure you get the go ahead. Like you can start using it like late in the third trimester if you're trying, you know, if you're ready to have the baby, but just check in and make sure that that's where you're at. And then with alcohol, it can give you weird dreams. So if you like that and you're done having your baby, like you could try that. I don't know. I've never done it, but that's what it's said to do it, but they can be like kind of psychic spiritual dreams. So that might be of interest to some of you to try without alcohol as well. But like, I'm just saying it triggers that to so be aware of that, um, heavy bleeding in postpartum, um, is not great to have too much clary sage if that's your case. Okay, so now Jasmine. Jasmine is just lovely. Um, it's calming and energizing at the same time. And I think if you think about um, pregnancy, 
like I usually start Jasmine later in the third trimester because it can affect the uterus, but like postpartum, you need energy. Um, being a mom or dad, you need energy to chase after your kids. So it's really nice to think of something that can calm your stress and also energize you at the same time. I think those two together are really powerful and balanced and it's just such a lovely feminine smell to it. Um, it increases mental acuity, which is really handy if you're with kids all the time, um, stimulates uterine action and contractions. Also, it supports the nervous system and physical exhaustion. So this would have been a really good one for me when I was having my post, oops, sorry. I was trying to close the, ah, ah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take a quick coffee break. How do I get out of this? I have to close it out and go back, hold on. Ooh, there it is, sorry. I had this like alert on my computer and when I closed it, that's what happened. Okay, starting slideshow. There we go. <laughs> um, okay, so it's when I had the problems with my daughter in postpartum, this would have been really good for me. So if someone feels like they have adrenal fatigue or burnout, this is just so nice again, because it helps to lower stress and increase energy. And I think it works by helping with cortisol. Um, so if you have, if you're exhausted, you tend, sometimes you have low cortisol during the day and then it spikes at night and you can't sleep. You get like a second one that keeps you up. So this would be a good one for that. It also increases libido, um, which I think a lot of people need during pregnancy and with little kids. Um, it's hormone balancing and it's balancing to milk production. So some people say it decreases it. Some people say it increases it. It's used a lot um, for engorgement and also for weaning but then it also increases production. So I, I find it to be more balancing. Um, it can help with after pain, which is just right after the baby's born before you birth the placenta or even like a little bit after that and cramps, that's a nice one. Also um, baby blues, labor pain and progression, poor immunity, and then weaning, as I just mentioned. So, and I just say the precautions, make sure you're using pure Jasmine Absolute because I know it's more expensive, but this is a really, a difficult plant to harvest and it takes a lot of hands to harvest it and can only be done I think it's at dusk like it's it's just it's expensive because of how labor um, heavy it is but a little bit it's so strong when you get the real pure absolute version it's so strong and potent that it goes a little goes a long way and you're going to get it adulterated if you get a cheap jasmine or cheap frankincense, those things are like not real. They're synthetic and it won't have the benefits. Um, begin use in labor when a woman is ready to start labor, may suppress milk production in some women. Okay, so I can stay on and like chat more, but I just wanted to show you where to get some of the information I brought up a couple times. So I had two early books that I did that are still out there. One was a blend, essential blends for the birth kit um, which had blends for every phase of pregnancy and for kids and stuff or more like babies. But, and then the other was a lot of charts and graphs about how to use these and, you know, kind of when to use them. Um, and then I had it redesigned and put into this book. And this is just a great, like inexpensive, it's like under $10 and it's just got everything that I learned in like two years of solid research on this topic. So I put it all in one place for you. And then this is kind of just dear to my heart, um, but a really great, I think, resource for people that want to know, especially those in their first pregnancy, because I kind of go through from the very beginning, the first symptoms you may have, like through every phase of pregnancy and then after the baby's born. Um, and I also highlight, I think, 20 of my favorite herbs and how to use them. And it has lots of information. The chart I'm giving you is from this book. Um, so please check it out. I would love to share it with you. I tell, you know, in the beginning, I do little short stories about my experience and it was just super fun to write um, and based on a lot of, lot of study and work <laughs> on my end that I hope that you'll all benefit from. Um, and then if you'd like to go deeper into this topic, this is just my intro talk. I know some of you may have heard this same or similar talk before, but I go way more in depth onto this topic in my online training course. It's a five hours of kind of keynote classes like this. Um, and 
It also has a certification involved. So if you want to teach or if you are a birth professional in the United States, I can give you continuing education credits um, for the CEU track. So usually it's $125. I know not everyone's um, using US dollars, but you maybe hopefully know what about how much that is. And then um, that's 15% off through, I think I have it through Sunday, October 25th. And the code is at the bottom there, but I'm sure we'll email that to you as well with the links for all this stuff. So um, yeah, that's just a lot more information. Thank you. And thank you, Zareen. And um, please uh, consider joining my Facebook group. If you're not already there, it's Essential Oils for the Birth Kit. And I travel a lot. My Even during COVID, I've been traveling and um, it's been great to teach abroad and do stuff. It's And there's my Instagram account where I have my travels and I let people know where I'll be teaching next. Um, hopefully I'll be doing more of that soon. And there, stop the share. So if anyone has any questions for me or Zarine, I guess, um, yes, Kayla, hi. Let's see. Hi. Hi, how um, are you? I have been asked, good, good. I have been asked um, a couple times about uh, fertility. Fertility has come up quite a bit sure. lately. Um, and do you have a, um, maybe you can talk about, maybe it would help other people here. Um, do you have like a fertility uh, protocol that you recommend? Yeah, totally. Well, I'm, unfortunately it's not ready yet. I am definitely working on this. I've basically done all the research and now I'm trying to come up with blends. So I'm, I think for me, working with a lot of midwives over the years and fertility specialists and stuff like I've, I've been consulting with them and trying like fertility is not simple. Like with pregnancy, pregnancy is not simple either, but you can kind of say, okay, the woman's pregnant. So you can kind of expect this to happen with fertility. There's so many different causes and contributions, but um, I do think it comes down to um, detoxifying and you probably know how to work with people on that. Um, and so things like, I mean, geranium is great for that things over the liver with a castor pack are great for that and making sure the channels of elimination are open. So if you're going to detoxify, it's like cleaning out your garage and then leaving all the bags on the porch, like for months, right? You got to make sure you can poop and sweat and like get rid of this stuff once you detoxify. So like, to me, I'm like, okay, what are the oils I'd recommend for opening the channels of elimination and then detoxifying and then balancing the hormones is another one. So, um, you know, again, clary sage or clary calm as a blend. Um, that would be good for hormone balancing. Um, there's detoxifying blends. So that's kind of it, but then there, there's a little more to it. Like sandalwood is really good for men. So I'm trying to come up with a sandalwood deodorant <laughs> recipe um, or just some way, you know, I mean, he can just add it to his soap, but like, I feel like a lot of guys will be like, okay, whatever, I'll do it. But like, if you just put it in their soap, then they just have to do it. So I was trying to think of easy way. Not every man's like that, but some of you may be able to relate where I'm like, I'll just add it to his his shampoo. <laughs> so I'm trying to think easy ways for, for women also to just have this in and just, isn't that easier to just have it integrated in what you're already using? So I don't have that ready yet, unfortunately, but I hope to have it ready um, by summer maybe, or maybe before. That's cool. So like, um, and then where, where would you stop using? I mean, I guess geranium is super safe um for during pregnancy anyhow but if there's like an oil like say um clary sage where you would use that for balancing hormones and like would you stop when you find out that you miss your first period or would you stop when you like do you know what i'm do you know what i'm saying like yeah. if you're trying do you use right. do you use it at the beginning and then stop at the end of the month or I think it's, I think all of these are safe enough to, you know, when you've missed your period and it's like four days late and that's unusual, I would just go ahead and stop some of the ones that I don't, but, but in all honesty, like Clary Sage is a uterine contractor. So like, it's not going to really be like in the early pregnancy, it's, it's, but you don't really want to contract your uterus then either, but it's not really going to have the same kind of effect that it would later in pregnancy. And then the same with like birch and winter green like you don't have double volume of blood at the very beginning so right. there's nothing that really strikes me as oh my god use this oil for fertility but then stop right away or like be really careful like i i think that it's okay there 
they're gentle enough and none of them really cause harm. You know, it's more just that you want to work in line with what your body needs. Exactly. Totally, totally makes sense. And then, yeah, I think that was all my questions. Oh, and, um, I loved to make um, tea with like, just like have hot-ish water, like warm water and then put in essential oil. But during both my pregnancies, I, I kind of went into this like kind of nervous about the heating of the oil and then ingesting it. Do you know anything about that? Well, I think that you just would damage the medicinal properties with heat. Like I cook and bake with the oils and I'm really going for the flavor. I'm not like, oh, I'm putting lemon in my muffin so that I can boost my liver, you know, glutathione production. Because, right. you know, you're going to lose some of those constituents. But, you know, again, I would just, unless it's absolutely necessary, you're working with a practitioner, I would just suggest mostly to just stick with topical and aromatic if you can. I know some people yeah. disagree with me. <laughs> No, 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 that's I just, I just have done all this, you know, like I've spent so much time thinking about this and, and learning it. And I would never want to give advice that I wasn't absolutely sure was good advice. So I guess that's where I'm coming from. Totally. Yeah. And that's why and I, I thought I'd ask. Yeah. But as new research to comes out, I might just totally change my mind. You know, I, if I see the research, I'm like, okay, great. Let's go for it. Yeah. Coming back to the point on the internal oils for ingestion, I guess, like into hot water, or into baked goods. So there have been research studies that have said that the essential oil, because it does get warmed or heated, it does reduce the efficacy by 50 to 70 um, percent. Yeah. So you'll still get like the flavoring for it. But because of the chemical constituents changing, it does change it by about 50 to 70 percent. So you're still getting a bit of the benefit, but it's not um, anything yeah. as to what it would be if you're using it as is. Yeah, cool. This is kind of unrelated, but I, I, when I think about pregnancy and babies and nursing, I'm always thinking about flora, gut flora, because I worked with a lot of autistic kids and, you know, and babies and like gut flora is so important. And um, I, so I was curious about whether essential oils would, how much, like, are they going to work like an antibacterial soap and kill everything and not give your kids exposure, especially during COVID when we're all like keeping ourselves so distant. Or are they going to keep some things alive? And actually they do work to like, they did this stuffed animal study where they spray them and wash them down with essential oils. And they did like mostly, the essentials mostly target the bad bacteria and keep alive the probiotic good stuff. So I thought that was really great to know. Any other questions that we have? And then we'll just kind of, I'll go back to sharing a slide and then we will wrap it up. Um, I just wanted to say, and I don't know if you're already planning on saying this, but we're basically doing the same presentation um, tomorrow and the next day. And we have all the time, it's a different time. Um, this one started at 4.30 PM, my time zone, and it's at 9 AM. Um, my time zone tomorrow and the next day. So if you guys know anyone you think would like to participate, please invite them. Um, we'd love to have them on the call and just reach more people. Thanks. Absolutely. And then I'm just going to share. So as Stephanie had mentioned, there is like the promo code to be using for um, the books as well as for the course. So definitely do take advantage of that. One other thing is for any of you guys that are interested in using the essential oils this month for anyone that is enrolling with over 100 PV, they will be getting a breathe touch for free. This is a blend of, it does have peppermint, it does have eucalyptus, it does have rosemary, so maybe not the most ideal blend for pregnancy, but this is a great one for immunity support, for respiratory support. Um, and this is good as like a roll-on where you can just toss it into your purse and carry it with you as you go. So again, Stephanie, do you wanna put your uh, details again on the screen? And then what we can do is people can just screenshot it or in the email that I'm gonna be sending out afterwards with a copy of the recording. Again, so if you guys know anyone that is interested in attending, but they might not be able to attend in person, we'll also be sharing out the recordings after the class so that way they can 
rewatch yeah. it or you guys are also able to rewatch it at any time to get any of the tidbits of information that you guys right. have learned today. And again, reach out to Stephanie or myself for more information either about the course, the books, or how to integrate the essential oils and, into your and life. If and if someone else invited you to, to join this call also, like please reach out to them about the oils um, as well because a lot of people are sharing them. And um, I know it's kind of confusing when we talk about joining and wholesale and there's just so much to learn if you're new to what doTERRA is, but it's a great company and um, the oils are amazing. So I think that someone will explain that to you, whether it's Sarin and I or someone else, just ask. Yeah, definitely. And it's, again, we'll guide you, like we have all of the contact information. So everyone that filled in the form to get registered, you'll basically be reached out to by the person who had created that link or shared that link with you. And then again, afterwards, once you do join, and once you are using the oils, Stephanie has vast resources that she provides her team. I have other resources as well that I provide my team. So it is a community effort for everything that is available to you and that can help you and guide you. Yeah, I just popped this up. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So we will be sending out the recording definitely. Cool. Thanks everyone for attending. Great class. <laughs> Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Amazing that we can. Um, do this sort of thing even from Australia. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. That's true. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Amazing cool. on the online space, isn't it? It's really great. Been, look, I think that's one of the if positives from COVID is at least we've um, made much bigger networking. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm curious, is anyone else from, like, where are people from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from, you know, I'm from Oregon, but <laughs> Zareen, you're in India. Yeah, so I'm uh, originally from Canada, but I'm based in India right now. And then what? we had most people were from, we had a couple from Hawaii that have registered, a few from Australia, a couple from New Zealand, and but yeah, and then India as well. So <laughs> Canada, yeah, is right, isn't it? Just yeah. spread across different time zones so that way we can cover everyone across the world. So the other classes are at different times slightly. So that way, if anyone else is interested, they're mm -hmm. at least available. So. Thank you all for attending. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.